photoelectric effect. In this video, we'll use the equation we described in the previous video to solve for frequency, kinetic energy, and velocity. Be sure you have a good understanding of the photoelectric effect before continuing on with this. If you don't remember, just go back to the last video and watch all of the information on the photoelectric effect again. So the work function for calcium is 4.34 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Remember, the work function is the amount of energy it takes to remove an electron from a metal. Now I ask you what the minimum frequency of light required to eject the electrons is. For this, we're going to need to use the equation from the earlier podcast. This is actually going to be a two-step problem. First, we'll find the threshold frequency, and then we'll find the kinetic energy and velocity at a different frequency. So first, we'll lay out our plan for our problem-solving skills. For part one, we have an equation that relates the work function to the kinetic energy. Notice here that I switch notations. Different sources will use different symbols for the work function, and I want you to get used to that. From here, we also know the work function. It was given in the problem. This gives us the minimum frequency of light that will eject the electron from calcium. For the second part, we want to know the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons, so we'll solve for E by filling in the new frequency and work function. This is our plan. Now let's carry it out. We must first find the threshold frequency. We know the work function, or in other words, how much energy it takes to remove the electrons. So we can use E equals H nu. Some people like to think of this as coming from the photoelectric effect equation. Some people like to just think of this as using E equals H nu and solving for frequency. Either way is fine. Now let's solve for frequency. Using nu is equal to the work function over h, or in other words, the energy it takes to remove the electron over h. We'll fill in our numbers, watching our units, to give us our answer. Now let's work through the second part. We go back to our E equals H nu minus the work function. We know the kinetic energy of the ejected electron for the second part. And so we can simply solve for E by filling in the new frequency and the work function from before. Since it's the same metal, the work function doesn't change. Notice here, we fill in the frequency that is given, not the threshold frequency because that's the frequency at which the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons is zero. From here, we solve for the kinetic energy, and we can use our one-half mv squared equation for kinetic energy, which doesn't change just because we're in a new application now, to solve for the velocity. You should now have an understanding of how to interconvert between frequency, kinetic energy, velocity, and the work function. Of course, there are many, many types of problems that are converting between these three using the two equations that we talked about here, so be sure you understand the basic ideas and the problem-solving techniques, not simply how to do this one problem. And as always, we'll go through this much more in class.